friends! Welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to the start of another fun series. Over the next eight videos, I'm going to be bringing you some different ideas for Mother's Day or just moms in general, really. Of course, any of these designs you can adapt to be for grandmas, aunts, best friends, really anybody. You do not have to make any of these designs that I'm bringing to you mom themed, but I always get asked for specific designs for holidays and things, so I thought it would be fun to do a little Mother's Day series. We're starting off with a really fun neon pink tumbler design. I had so much fun making this one and I hope you all enjoy this first video. If you do, be sure to give it a thumbs up down below. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you are not already, and of course let me know what you think down below in the comments. Okay, I think that's it. I hope you like the video. Let's go! For this design, we are going to be using a true 24 ounce tumbler from the Tipsy Magnolia. And I'm going to start by hand painting my ombre onto my tumbler. Of course, if you'd prefer, you can spray paint your ombre. This really is not going to matter in the end. You just want to get a nice base of paint down for your glitters. Now, of course, in true Mal fashion, I'm using way too much paint. You absolutely do not need this much. Um, but what I'm doing here is taking my big paintbrush and brushing my paint around my tumbler as you can see and I'm gonna try to get these colors as blended as I can but again like I said this does not need to be perfect you just want to get a good base layer down of course I'm using my favorite acrylic paints here these are the Delta creative ceram coat brand of paints you can get these on Amazon or at Joann's and I'm using moonlight rose Lisa pink and then white for the very bottom All right, so after my paint is applied to my tumbler, I'm gonna let it sit and dry probably for like an hour or two, and then I'll be ready to apply my glitter ombre. Now, while I was filming this glitter ombre, I was on a Zoom call with some members of my elite fam. We do a Zoom hangout every month. So while we were doing the hangout, I was doing this glitter ombre. So if you see me laughing, talking in general, like being very silly, that's why, because I was on a Zoom call with my fam. So I'm going to apply this glitter using the epoxy method, and I definitely did not wait enough time for my paint to dry before applying the epoxy. You can see that the paint is like moving all around. Me using too much paint finally backfired on me. The paint was not fully dry in some spots, so you can see it moves all the way around, but we're just gonna go with it. The design I have in mind for this is going to make all of this irrelevant so we're just going to keep going but if you had a design that really needed to be like super clean I would make sure that you let this epoxy dry like just put that layer of epoxy on let it cure and then you can either repaint or you can go in a different direction so for this design though it does not matter we're just going to keep moving on as normal so I'm starting with my lightest color first. This is Parabatai from Peachy Olive Glitters, and I'm going to go pretty much full coverage on that bottom white section. Because that's our lightest section, I really want to establish the full color there, and then we can move on to our darker colors. So after going pretty full coverage with Parabatai, we're gonna lighten up the coverage just a little bit as we move into those darker colors, but we're not gonna go like full traditional ombre rules with this. We are gonna go a little bit more heavy handed throughout the entire process than I typically would. And that's just because we're using less glitter. I'm only using a couple cuts per color where normally I go a little psycho and I use like a thousand colors in a glitter ombre, but we're really simplifying this one. So the hot neon pink that I'm using here is Bailey from Peachy Olive Glitters and I'm gonna put that at the top of the cup and you can see I'm like relatively light but not as light as I would typically go if you've seen any of my previous glitter ombre videos you'll notice a little bit of a difference here 
So the next color we're using is that mid-tone pink. We're gonna put that as the transition color between the dark pink and the white. And of course, I'm using Barbie, which is my custom glitter mix that I made for my collab palette with Peachy Olive Glitters last summer. Now we're gonna jump back into the darker pink section. I'm gonna lay down Cool Mom, which is a mini chunky. So we've got Bailey, which is a chunky cut, and then we've got Cool Mom, which is kind of more the same size of Parabatai and Barbie. So I wanted to lay that down just to add additional dimension. And once we've got that down, we can move back to the bottom of the tumbler in our white section. I'm gonna take Nookie, which is my fine cut opal white, and I'm just going to, again, go pretty full coverage down at the white section. I want to really establish that white, like I said. I don't want too much of the pink moving down into there because we've already got our pink paint that got messed up when we applied our epoxy. So our white area already has a little bit of like pink stuff going on with it. Then moving back up to the top of the tumbler, we're going to take Wednesdays, which is the fine cut of Cool Mom. So I'm going to just place that everywhere that I laid down the hot pink colors. And at this point, because we're on the fine cut, we can go pretty heavy handed here. As you saw, I was not being like very gentle when I added that fine cut glitter because now we've got enough color established that we can really just go crazy with the color. For the mid-tone pink, I'm using another color from my palette from last summer, Love You Bye. As of right now, this color is in stock, so be sure to grab it if you don't have it. It's the perfect, just soft, girly, fine-cut pink. And if I do say so myself, it pairs pretty perfectly with Barbie. And then finally, for our extra fine white to give us a little extra coverage, I'm going to use Baby Powder. This is an Olive's Glitter Outlet color, but you can get it on the Peachy Olive Glitters website. And I'm just going to put that all over that white section of glitter to make sure everything is as covered as possible and as blended as can be. Then I decided I wanted to add one more color. I decided to add the extra fine cut of Cool Mom and Wednesdays, which is Regina George, just to give a little bit more coverage to that top hot pink section, blend the colors a little bit more, and just make everything look a little bit more blended. So I'm just gonna put that on the top portion, and then with my gloved hand, I'm going to clean up the top rim, and then tap down all of that chunky glitter to get it to lie as flat as possible, in that epoxy that we have down so that all of the other steps moving forward are a little bit easier and we don't have all of these crazy chunky pieces of glitter poking up that we have to sand down later. So I let that epoxy and glitter layer dry overnight and then I went in with my favorite sealer, the Crystalac Glitter Glue mixed with water. I just do a 50-50 mix and I'm going to brush that onto my tumbler to seal the glitter and make sure again that everything is lying flat and that we're not going to get a ton of movement when we go in to add our epoxy. I'm starting with the white section and then I'm just going to move my way up to the darker pink color. I let that dry for two hours and then I added two coats of the Flynn Sisters Fast Cure Epoxy to the tumbler. Each coat was about 25 milliliters and I'm waiting probably like six hours in between coats. So at this point we have two coats of epoxy on the cup and I've done a full round of sanding so our cup is as smooth as can be. So now we're ready to apply all of our vinyl details. We're gonna start with our decal. Now I got this SVG on Etsy and it says, I used to be cool, but now I just argue with miniature versions of myself, which I thought was so funny. <laughs> so I downloaded the SVG and then I created two offsets. So the first layer we're gonna lay down is an offset of our middle offset. And I just made it one solid piece because I had that nick in the paint from when I applied my epoxy to wet paint and it's smeared and got all messed up. So I'm just gonna cover that up with vinyl. Nobody will ever know, everything is totally fine and we're doing great, okay? So we're going to lay that down first and then I'm gonna take my middle layer. Now this middle layer is an offset of the original SVG obviously and I made it 0 0.03 in width and then for the bottom layer I made the offset 0 0.05 in width from this 0 0.03. So the very bottom layer is essentially 0 0.08 in width larger than the original SVG. Hopefully that makes sense. But what I'm going to do here is layer this hot pink vinyl over the white. Now what's nice about this vinyl is that the backing is kind of transparent. So you can lay your decal down 
and see where you're putting it. It's kind of like doing the parchment paper method if you've ever seen that, um, but this makes layering decals really, really easy. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of the transfer tape exposed so that I can stick it down once I've got the decal lined up. And then I'll just push the rest of the decal onto my tumbler with my vinyl squeegee. Now the backing for the black vinyl is essentially the same as the pink, so we can just repeat that exact same process for the top layer of the decal. So now to add a little extra zest to our tumbler, I cut out some leopard print using that same neon pink vinyl that we used for the middle layer of our decal. And I'm just going to fill the entire cup up with this leopard print. Now, of course, if you wanna stop with just the decal and not add anything else to the tumbler, you absolutely can. But I really wanted to bring some more neon pink somewhere to the cup because we just did not have enough pink in my opinion. So I thought I would do leopard print because Everybody always freaks out over the leopard print, so that's what I decided to do. So after I had all of the leopard print placed down on my tumbler, I went right into my final two coats of epoxy. For my final two coats, I'm using the Flint Sisters Artist Cure Epoxy, and each coat was about 20 milliliters. So after that final coat was cured, we are all done. Here is the final tumbler design. I really love how this turned out. Even though we had a little bit of a mishap in the beginning, you really can't tell. So it all worked out in the end. I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up down below. As always, let me know what you think of the design down below in the comments, and I will see you tomorrow for another Mother's Day tumbler design. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you then. Okay, love you. Bye. I want to say a special thank you to all of my channel members, subscribers, and especially my elite fam. Thank you guys for all of your support. I literally could not do this without you. If you want to be part of the fam, you can subscribe to the channel, join as a channel member, or if you'd like the full shebang, extra content, and all of that, you can join my elite fam by going to patreon.com slash elite fam. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I love you so much, and I'm so grateful for all of you, and I'll see you in the next video. Here's one if you want to check it out. Okay, love you. Bye.